It's finally time to trim this Wii motherboard so that we can make our Ashida Wii portable. If you haven't watched the first video in this series, I cover all the soft bonding steps that you need to perform before you disassemble your Wii. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the OMG WTF trim in this CPU 40 Wii. Long story short, we are literally going to cut this Wii motherboard with a Dremel to make it smaller so that it will fit into our handheld console. Let's go over all the things that we're gonna need to trim this Wii motherboard and to test it afterwards. Obviously, we have our soft modded Wii motherboard. It has the homebrew channel and RV loader already installed on it. In order to test our trimmed Wii, we're going to need a PMS2 or PMS Lite from Four Layer Tech. PMS is power management system, and this board is going to take in battery voltage from some rechargeable batteries and supply all the voltages to the trimmed Wii motherboard. This is one of the PCBs that is required to build an Ashita Wii, so you might as well buy it now so that you can use it to test your trimmed Wii. Along with the PMS or PMS Lite, we are going to need an 18650 battery holder and an 18650 battery. This battery is going to let us power the PMS and power the Wii so that we can test it before we actually put the whole Ashita Wii together. I suppose you can always buy a battery holder for the larger batteries that are required to build the Ashita Wii. And I guess you could also use a bench power supply, but you have to solder it to the PMS system, so you'll have to come up with a good solution for that. We're also gonna need a tack switch, which is also on the Ashita Wii build materials. And and this is going to be used to actually turn the PMS on and to turn the Wii on so that we can test it. We're also going to need a couple different types of wire to hook the PMS up to the trimmed Wii. I have some 24 gauge silicone wire here that we can use to hook the voltage lines from the PMS up to the Wii. I also have some 30 gauge wire wrapping wire that we can use to hook up some of the signals from the PMS board up to the trimmed Wii. I also have a piece of composite video cable wire. In order to test our Wii, we're going to use the composite video output from the trimmed Wii and we're going to wire it to the Wii AV port so that we can test it on a TV before we move forward. You'll also need some not cut up Wii composite cables so that we can connect this to a scaler or a TV so that we can test the Wii trim. You're also gonna need a Dremel and some kind of a cutting bit. We're also gonna need a bunch of different grits of sandpaper. After we cut the Wii out, we're gonna need to sand the edges with some sandpaper so that there aren't any shorts. I wasn't sure which grits to get, so I bought a pack that had a bunch of different grits in it. Before we actually do anything, I want to remove some of the components from the Wii board that might get in the way of our trimming. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove the Wii AV port because we're going to be using this later on to test to make sure our trim is successful. Let's add some fresh solder to these pins. I'm gonna use my desoldering gun to desolder these small pins in the middle. Next, I'm gonna use some solder braid to remove the solder from these legs here. Okay, that was a little more annoying than I thought it was gonna be, but we need this AV port later on, and it might get in the way of us cutting down here. We're gonna be tracing the outline that we're going to cut with our Dremel in a minute, but before we do that, I want to remove some of the larger components that are gonna be in the pathway of us cutting from the top side here. We're gonna remove this component here, and we're going to remove this capacitor here. Normally I would say that we should use a soldering iron to remove these, but since we're gonna be cutting through this pathway anyways, there's a chance that this pad is gonna get damaged anyways. So I'm just gonna use some pliers here to see if I can rip it off. It kind of falls apart more than rips off. That was easier than I thought it was gonna be, so let's remove the legs here with some solder. Okay, that's one component down, the other one is up here. There is also this 1.8 volt voltage regulator here that we have to remove. The PMS2 has a 1.8 volt voltage regulator on it, so we don't need the one on the board here. But if you have a PMS Lite, you have to keep the voltage regulator here because the PMS Lite does not have a 1.8 volt voltage regulator.
it's finally time to trace the outline of the shape that we're going to cut out. I'm going to refer to the image in the trimming section of the Bitbuilt forum. So this is what I'm going to draw on my Wii. So I'm going to use my Sharpie and a straight edge. I'm going to be drawing on the bottom side of the board. And I'm going to start by putting a dot somewhere up here. Then we need another dot right about there. Then I'm going to make a line between them. Now the next dot is right around here, somewhere about there. And the next one here. Let's connect these lines. And this one here. Then I'm just going to go straight across to this little cutout here. Then we're going to go over here. Same thing, just make a line to the little cutout. And then the last line goes all the way back to the beginning. Okay, there's the shape that we're going to cut out. When we cut the shape out, we want to stay on the outside of the line here. That way we can use sandpaper to get it a little closer to the edge. Now that we've dremeled our Wii, let's put the rest of the PCB aside for a second. If you look at the edges of the PCB, you'll notice that there's a lot of copper sticking out. What we need to do is use some sandpaper to sand the edges of all the sides of this cutout PCB. I have a few different grits of sandpaper. I'm going to start with the roughest one and work to a fine grade one. So let's start with the 180 grit. We can just cut out a smallish piece. When we do our sanding, we want to sand it on the edges of the PCB, not necessarily on the flat edge, but the corners where the copper might be sticking out. I think that looks pretty good for the 180 grit. Let's switch over to the 320 grit. I think it looks pretty good even after the 320 grit, but let's move on to the 600, 800, and 1000. 20 minutes later. I think that's good for the sanding. I'm just gonna clean up around the edges of the board a little bit with some isopropyl alcohol. All right, now I have this cleaned up, trimmed Wii motherboard. I just wanted to take a second to take a look at the edges here. It might be difficult in my video here, Let's see if we can find a good spot. Here's kind of a good spot and it will probably show up better in person. What we want to see all the way around the trim is those separated lines so that they're not touching anywhere. Those are the layers of copper inside of the PCB and that's what we were trying to separate when we were sanding all the way around. There is something that we can check to help make sure that our trim is going to succeed. There is this table on the Bitbuilt forums that has a list of the resistance values that the voltage lines of the trimmed Wii motherboard should have about. It's separated by the different voltage lines. So the one volt line, the 1.15 volt line, the 1.8 volt line, and the 3.3 volt line. If we take our multimeter and we set it to the resistance checker setting, we could put the negative probe on any piece of ground. So I'm gonna use these exposed copper like screw hole things, but you'll have to cross reference a diagram that shows where the voltage lines are on this trimmed Wii motherboard, basically where they end, where you can put your positive probe on. I'm gonna move everything over so I can get my multimeter in the shot. Let's do the one volt line so let's put the ground point here then we can put the positive probe right around here let's see what the resistance value is so this looks kind of high it's 267 ohms but let's keep going and we'll check the other line so that was one volt now let's check the 1.15 volt which is right here let's see what it says 49.5 ohms which is 
right about what we expect at 47 ohms. You can also check the resistance between 1.15 and 1, 430 kilo ohm. Hmm, that is interesting. Well, let's keep going. All right, let's check 1.8 volts, which I believe is this point up here. It doesn't show it on the diagram, but I think that's right. Let's see, about 36 ohms. So that's right about 37, which is on the diagram. We can also compare this to one volts up here, showing about 340. 40 ohms so I think maybe there's something wrong with our one point or our one volt rail and let's check against 1.15 81 ohms so that's a little low also all right let's check between ground and 3.3 volts which is up here oh no I'm sorry it's down here that pad 3.3 K ohms what happens up here? Okay, that's better. I wonder if it has to do with how far away the ground is from the pad that you're testing. Okay, so 3.3 volts looks good, but let's compare 3.3 volts to, first we'll do one volts, which is here. I expect this to be off because the other one volt readings were off. Yeah, this time is about half, so about 4K compared to 7.2K in the diagram. 1.15, this one's also about half, 3.4K and then 1.8. Okay, so that one's correct. Either way, I think that means that the trim is mostly good. We're just going to have to hook it up to our PMS2 here and power it on and actually see if we get a signal from the composite to truly confirm that it's working. For pretty much the rest of the video, I'm going to be referring to this Ginger of Oz video where he's wiring up a Wii Portable, but he talks in good detail about the steps that you have to do to wire up your trimmed Wii motherboard to the PMS2 so that we could power it on. If you're interested in doing a portable Wii, I highly recommend that you watch this video, although it's 12 hours long. Let's start by connecting wires from the PMS2 to the actual cut down Wii motherboard. Let's start with something called the U10 replacement. U10, if you didn't know, is this little chip here, and it's basically just responsible for setting a small voltage pulse in the boot up sequence of the Wii. The cool thing about using the PMS2 is we don't actually have to relocate that U10 chip at all. We can just connect the pad on the PMS2 for U10 to a very specific spot on this cut down Wii motherboard. Okay, let's flip the trim board over and I'm gonna situate it like this. We're going to need to solder some magnet wire to a via right there on the motherboard, the one in the middle on this row. So let's prepare some 30 gauge magnet wire. I'm going to strip a little bit off of the end. Okay, there we go, we stripped a little bit off. Now let's tin the wire. Okay, our objective is to try to get this magnet wire actually to go through that via. It might be a little bit hard if you've just freshly tinned it. So I found that if you take the tinned wire and just cut it at a 45 degree angle, the wire should go into that via pretty easily. It might be hard to tell, but something like that and now we should be able to solder that wire to that via. All right, that's all we're gonna do for now. We're just gonna let this wire hang for a minute. Next, we're going to solder the battery holder onto the PMS2 here. So we need this battery holder. This is 22 gauge ribbon wire that you normally use to wire up uh, LED strips. So I have this piece here with a red and black wire. Well, I guess we might as well separate them and let's strip this one side. Might as well do that for both wires. Let's go ahead and tin these wires. And let's tin the pads on our wire holder we only need one 18650 battery, so I'm just gonna find the plus side and kind of see it inside of here. And I'm gonna wire my red wire up to that. So let's go ahead and tin this side. And then we can solder our wire to it. And then the same thing for our negative side. Now, if we look at our PMS2, we can see a battery plus and battery minus pad. So let's tin these pads too. And now we can wire the positive and negative battery wire leads from the battery holder. Let's tin these. Add some liquid flux to our PMS board and then solder the wires. 
There is our battery holder hooked up to the PMS2 board. Okay, let's bring our trim weed back in. We might as well go ahead and solder U10 first. So the U10 pad is in the top middle up here. Let's go ahead and tin it. Let's cut our wire to length and strip some off of the end. And then we can solder it onto that U10 pad. Next, we need to wire up the 1 volt, 1.15 volt ground, and 1.6 volt voltage wires from the PMS2 to our trimmed Wii board. We might as well start with ground since I already have this black wire out. Let's tin the pad and solder our ground wire. The other side of the ground can go to pretty much anywhere that's grounded on the Wii board, but I'm going to use this screw pad right here. And let's solder that wire down. Let's do 1.15 next. I'm basically copying the colors from the Ginger of Oz video. So he's gonna use red. And the other end of that wire is gonna to go to the left side of this black component here. So let's tin it. Put some more flux and solder it on. Okay, next is three volts, which is a pad on the bottom here. Let's solder this greenish wire onto it. And that is gonna go all the way to this pad right here. All right, let's solder it on. Next, I'm gonna do one volt, which is a pad right here in this white color wire. Let's go ahead and tin the pad. Then we can solder this wire. And the other end of the wire is just going to get soldered to the top of this black component here. I think we need to do 1.6 volts too, but I don't see it in Ginger of Oz's video. So I'm just gonna try it and see what happens. So let's tin the 1.6 volt pad on the PMS2. Let's just use a yellow wire and solder the wire onto the pad. And then the other end of 1.6 goes to this component up here. Okay, there are all the voltage wires and U10 soldered up to the PMS2. Now that we have the voltage wires connected between the PMS2 and the trimmed Wii motherboard, let's put all this aside for a second. We need to pull out our desoldered Wii AV connector and some shielded cable. I'm gonna be using part of a composite video cable that I just cut the end off of. So let's go ahead and strip the outer sheath off of this component cable kind of carefully. Now I'm gonna to try to peel the shielding, the bare copper wires that are in here I'm just going to try to bundle them up together. Okay, and then I can sort of twist them together. Okay, this will be for ground. Now we need to cut the inside sheath here to expose the inner wires. Okay, there we go. Now we have two wires. One was the shielding that was inside of this black sheath, and then we have the inner wire that was inside of this white sheath. Now we need to find a pinout for a Wii AV connector so that we can solder the inside wire here to composite and the outside one to ground somewhere. Luckily, there was a pinout on the BitBuilt site. So I'm gonna hold my AV port like this, and I'm going to tin this ground pad here. We're gonna use this leg, which is connected to the outside of the port as a ground. Now let's solder the ground wire to that tab. Then the composite video wire is the second pin from the bottom left here on the bottom row. So let's tin that pin. Then we can carefully solder that composite video wire to the pin. All right, there we go. It's a little janky, but I think this should work for our purposes. Now on the other side, we need to do pretty much the same thing. So let's strip the outside sheath. And then we need to do the same thing with the inside. Now let's bring the mess of Wii wires back and flip it over. Now we need to look for this small black chip here and then you will see a few surface mount components on this right side here. I'm gonna leave a diagram up on the screen, but we're gonna be soldering these composite video wires, the composite video and the ground, to the second component up from the bottom. So the composite video wire is gonna get soldered to the left side of that capacitor or that component, and the ground is gonna get soldered on the other side of it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is solder both sides of this component without trying to lift it off the board.
Okay, I have a feeling this is gonna be difficult, but let's try it. So let's add some flux. I'm gonna solder the composite wire first, which goes on the inner side of this component. And then I can cut this ground wire a little bit shorter. Then we can solder the ground wire to the outer side of this component. Oops, I accidentally removed that resistor that we were trying to solder to. I talked with Wesk and they mentioned that that is a 75 ohm termination resistor for the composite video line. Our composite video might be a little bit brighter right now, but the Ashida doesn't use composite video for the screen. He also said that we can use this exposed via right underneath C57 for composite video than this test pad TP50 here for ground. So let's go ahead and tin those. I'm gonna start by soldering our ground wire to TP50. And now we can solder the composite video wire to the via exposed underneath C57. Okay, there we go. I hope that's a clear picture of what we're supposed to be doing here. We do need to do one more thing before we can actually turn our trimmed Wii on. So let's flip back over again. We need to wire up this little tack switch so that when we push it, the PMS2 actually turns on so that we can power on our trimmed Wii. The two legs that are on each side are what are going to be bridged when you press the button down. You'll want to find a pair of legs that make continuity when you press the button down. I've got this pretty thin gauge silicone wire, so I'm gonna cut two lengths of this, and we'll solder one wire to each of the legs. And then we're going to solder one wire between this button pad on the PMS2 and the ground pad at the top of the PMS2. It doesn't matter which wire goes to which pad. That should be all the wiring that we need to do to test our trimmed Wii setup. We just need to plug in our composite video cable and a charged 18650 battery into our battery holder, making sure that the positive side is gonna go on the positive side that we wired earlier. To turn on our trimmed Wii, we need to hold down the button that we soldered onto the PMS. If all goes well, you should be able to plug in a composite Wii cable, connect it to the TV, and we should be seeing an error message on the Wii. Unfortunately, in the beginning, I did not get any kind of video output for my Wii. I even removed all of the wires between the Wii and the PMS, and retested all of the resistance points again. The resistances were fine. I even made a little spreadsheet with the values that I recorded. I noticed, according to the PMS wiring diagram, that I needed a second ground wire. So I added a second ground wire in and moved my original ground wire to a new location according to the PMS wiring diagram. The Wii still didn't display anything, so I ended up asking for help on Twitter. G-Man Mods, the creator of another really amazing Wii handheld project, the G-Boy, looked at my wiring and mentioned that the ground pin on the Wii AV connector does not connect to the shielding of the connector. So I had to move the ground wire that I soldered to the shielding of the AV connector to the pin right next to the composite video pin. That's a ground pin on the actual AV connector. And wouldn't you know, now everything is working. I'm getting a composite video signal to display on the screen, and it's showing the error that I mentioned earlier. I highly recommend you take a look at the information in the BitBuilt forum if you are serious about trimming a Wii and building a portable Wii. If this video helped you trim your Wii, then give it a like and get subscribed so you don't miss the next part of my Ashida series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.